whistling. All right, we're gonna start at the bottom of our paper and we're gonna be doing a really cool Halloween pumpkin scene, but we're not gonna draw the whole pumpkin. So all you have to do at the bottom of your paper, way down here at the bottom, Whoa. I want you to draw a hill. I have some pumpkins over by the window right now. You guys can see those. The fifth graders are drawing those in a still life. All right, towards the top, but not at the top. I want you to draw a smile. You're gonna start the stem at that smile with two lines going up. Don't worry about the other parts of it. We're gonna add the whole vine on because we're gonna make this outside like it's still on the vine. So we have to make the sections of our pumpkin. Do you like my pumpkin right here in front of me? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So if you look at a real pumpkin, all of the sections start on the stem, right? Yeah, none of them start in the middle of the stem. None of them start on top of another stem. Or, and they're all curved. There's no straight lines in this pumpkin, is there? No. So we're going to start with our pencil on the bottom of the stem, or the smile line that we just made. And we're going to make a curve right off the bottom of the paper. Okay, we're going to go the other side and we're going to curve the other direction. Curve. So it looks like the top of an oval, right? Well, look at that. It looks like the top of a pumpkin section. That's a real pumpkin. It's just one of those little, yeah, small pumpkins. All right, go right back up to this bottom of the stem. Now, on the right side, I'm going to curve to the right. Right off the bottom of the paper. On the left side, still at the bottom of the stem, I'm going to curve to the left. It's okay if you go outside your line. I still got some room over here, so I'm still starting at the bottom of the stem. Don't sneak up here to the top of the stem. I'm going to go line all the way out to the edge of my oval. Look at that. One, two, three, four sections. When you look at the pumpkin, you see about one, two, three, four sections. That's it. That's all we have to draw. Bye. But we see some sections behind the stem. See those? Yeah, so we're going to draw those. Did they start at the middle of the stem? No. No, they start at the bottom of the stem. So I'm going to draw all the way out to the edge. But I'm not going to stop there. Don't be lazy. Keep your pencil going until you touch the section before. Was anybody lazy? No. no. Okay. Start at the bottom of the stem again. Go all the way out to the edge. Keep your line going until you touch the one before. Now I just have two more lines to do. Right at the edge of my hill here, I've got to finish so I don't have a big gap or a hole in the pumpkin. So I'm just putting in a little curve little curve on each side. Okay, now, before I forget, because I about forgot, turn your paper over and write your name on the back of it. Up at the top, somewhere up at the top. 
it's nighttime because our paper's black. So we need a moon, right? Yeah. You're going to decide. Don't put it right in the middle. Don't be boring. You decide if you're going to do a circle for a full moon. Are you going to do a crescent moon? No. It's up to you. I want to do a crescent moon. Oh. Guess what? That's a letter C with a letter C in the middle of it. It's a C. It's a double C. Crescent moon? Mine's a crescent moon. You can have a full moon though, but your moon needs to be round. That's an oval moon. Moons are not ovals. I I could I can't make a now if you made a mistake, color pencil will erase a little bit. So you can erase if you need to. Alright. Finish up your moon real quickly. Okay. Now, before we even start shading our moon, just leave your white color pencil out. I will collect those at the end of class. Please don't throw them down. That breaks the lead inside of them. We're going to start with the light coming off of the moon. Okay. So you're going to need a yellow or a white oil pastel. Okay, so my moon is going to be radiating light. So I started with a little bit of my yellow and I just went around my moon. I'm going to add in a little bit of white around it too. Let's see if I have another shade of yellow. I only had the really light yellow. This will work. Okay, is your moon radiating some light? Nolan, radiate it. Don't just draw an outline around it. Make that light shine outward. All right, now during different times of the night, the moon is different colors. During different time of the year, the moon is different colors. Sometimes. It's gray, sometimes it's yellow, sometimes it's orange, sometimes... I saw the orange moon last night. Did you? Yes. So, when you make your moon, when you make your moon, you are deciding on the color of your moon. If you want a silver or a gold moon, this is the day for you. But, make sure you outline it. Outline it with gray? I'm going to make a silver moon. Shade your moon in. You are making the color that you want. That was a little dark. So I'm going to blend a little bit of white into it. That way we can see the shape better. You might also want to put the craters on your moon. Some craters are little. 
Like Some lake craters are bigger. Wait, are you using I'm blue? using navy blue. You can use the color that you want. You are the artist. Okay, I still see a lot of black paper in your moons. You need to color enough to get rid of that black paper. Color it white? No. You color it the color you want to, but you need to cover up the black paper. Do we color the pumpkin? Not yet. All right, we're going to leave our sky alone for a little bit. We're going to go down and work on our pumpkin. Okay, so we're going to work on the lines first. We need to make those lines look like they sink inward. They push into the pumpkin. So do we want to make those darker or lighter? Darker. Darker. So I'm going to use a red. You could use a red or even, get this, a blue. Blue. <laughs> you are just going to trace over the lines. You know what the colors are. You have to choose. I said or. Go. Why are we using a blue? Yeah, that's a very good question. Blue is oranges. Look over here. Blue is oranges complementary color. So when you mix them together, it makes the orange really, really dark. So it's a good way to shade instead of using black is to use a color's complement. So when I shade something that's yellow, I shade with violet, because that's the complementary color to yellow. When I want to shade something that's red, I shade with green. Can you even do the stem red? No. Okay. We're going to put our highlight on our pumpkin because our moon is shining light out, right? So it's going to have highlights on it. You can see the little highlights on this pumpkin here. They're little shiny spots. So I want you to take a yellow or a white and I want you to put the highlights, just one highlight on each section. A yellow or a white? Okay, there are three different colors of orange. And you get to choose which two you're going to use. You need a dark and a light. So I could have this combination right here. Or I could have yellow, orange, and orange. This would be my dark. This would be my light. Cheater. You have to choose a dark and a light orange. I just said orange. A dark and a light orange. Okay. So, we are going to use our lighter orange right around our highlight. So, I like to just kind of outline the highlight. That way, I don't accidentally color into it. With your light orange, outline your highlight. What you need? 
There are three extra bins on the counter if you need another color, Reagan. Okay, now I'm gonna increase that light orange area. I'm trying not to get my shadow color on there though. Still the same light orange. Now when I use my darker orange, I can blend right over top of my section lines because we want to blend. So if you have blue, you're blending the orange right on top of it. I'm going right up to the edge of my light yellow and I'm blending with it, but I'm not coloring over all of the light yellow. I'm taking my dark orange. I'm going right over top of those red or blue lines so that I'm mixing with it. I'm going right around my light orange area and mixing with the edge of that just a little bit. You can still see some light orange there, right? And then I'm going to color the section. I don't want to leave black paper. Okay, I've got just a little bit more to do. Those sections in the back are really little, so I have to be careful not to color over my highlight, not to color over my light area. So I have to be more careful as I go back. All right, when you look at this stem, looks like a lot of you are done with the pumpkins. I still see some black spots in people's pumpkins. You need to color enough to get rid of the black paper. So you are gonna take the colors that you see. I see some tan at the bottom. If you don't have a tan, you could grab a different color. Then I'm going to use my other pumpkins grow on a vine in the fields. If you drove to Morton this fall before they pulled the pumpkins in, oh. you saw them in the fields. I had a soccer tournament in Morton. The more yep. pumpkins so I'm going to use my green or my other colors after the tan just to put some lines into my vine. So after I draw out my vine, 
just a little bit of detail in there. Or you might want some brown. You can decide if your vine still has a few leaves on it or not. And I'm going to finish up in my sky with a few details. I'm going to put some bats in the sky. I have bats at my house that come out every night. Hopefully they're not living in my house. They did a couple of years. It was hard to get them out. I started with an oval. I know it's hard to see. Super zoom. You do not have to put a bat in there if you don't want. You don't have to do anything. Gave it some little ears. Wings. Use a dark blue. Use a purple. Use the color that you want to use. <laughs> Guys, grab a grab a dark blue, grab a purple. All right, maybe just a few stars. It's hard to make little stars with the oil pastels because they're so thick. I just do the X with a T on top of it. All right. You get to take your pumpkin picture with you. I need you to put your oil pastels back in the tub.